Next, we'll look at how the lens on a video camera works. Inside a zoom lens, there are a number of moving glass elements. They move back and forth to change the angle of view and the magnification of the image. This allows you to capture clear images at various distances from the subjects. On a standard TV zoom lens, there are four control rings controlling the various functions. They're known as focus, zoom, iris or aperture, and back focus and macro, which are on the same ring. Let's start with the focus ring. I think this one is self-explanatory. The next ring is the zoom ring. This adjusts how big the image is. It also adjusts how close an object looks. And finally, it adjusts the angle of view. Close-up or wide shots can be achieved from the same camera position. We describe this as zooming in or zooming out. An operator can move the zoom while recording, giving the option of an on-air zoom move, although that's not usually recommended. The iris ring, or the aperture ring, is very similar to the pupil in your eye. It opens and closes to control the amount of light that enters the lens. It'll brighten or darken the image that's recorded. And the filters we saw earlier work in conjunction with this iris ring. The iris only has a certain range, so the filters bring the amount of light into the range that the iris can control. Here's what an aperture looks like. The opening in the lens is measured by a special number called the f-stop. The numbers are oppositely relative to the amount of light that's entering the lens. In other words, a small f-stop means a large opening, and therefore more light gets through. Experienced shooters will describe brightness in terms of number of f-stops. For example, if you want to brighten an image, you would say, open up by one stop. The amount of light entering the lens doubles or halves between each number on the f-stop ring. One half and double the light is between 2 and 2.8, between 2.8 and 4, and so on. The reason the numbers are weird is math. It has to do with circles and diameters and pi and stuff, and we're just going to leave that alone. But this is a neat relationship. The next number up on the iris ring is always half the amount of light, so it makes it easier to talk about iris settings. Inside the camera is a brightness sensor. When the camera is set to automatic iris or auto iris, this sensor controls the iris ring and sets the amount of light to what the camera decides is coming in. But again, the camera doesn't have a brain. It can't decide what should be bright and what should be dark. You have to make that decision. Auto iris will often cause the camera to under or overexpose the subject you are trying to shoot. That is why we will always insist on using manual iris. TV zoom lenses can be removed from the camera and put on other cameras. But each camera has a different distance between the back of the lens and the pickup sensors in the camera. The back focus on a video zoom lens adjusts the focus point of the lens so that it is focusing on the sensor. This is really important. Be sure to check the back focus every time you pick up a camera before you start shooting. There's a very simple procedure that we will demonstrate for you in class. You zoom all the way in on a back focus chart. You use the front focus wheel to focus the chart. You slowly zoom out. If the image goes out of focus, you release the back focus ring and refocus the back. You relock the back focus and you zoom back in and focus with the front focus again and try to zoom out again. If you zoom out and the chart stays in focus, then your back focus is set correctly. This slide is just here for your reference for later. We will demonstrate this for you in class. The other function on this back focus ring is to control the minimum distance in front of the lens in which things can be in focus. This is very useful for shooting small objects or for getting really close to your subjects. It's called a macro and we'll also demonstrate this for you in class. This is the procedure for setting your focus on a subject before you record. You use the maximum zoom to make the object as large as possible. This makes sharp focusing easier. When you zoom back out, the focus shouldn't change. If it does, the back focus is off and you need to adjust that. But if the back focus is set correctly, you zoom out, set your frame size, and record. Again, we'll demo this process in class.